and post-diagnosis products for chronic illness and for wellness. The lead product, Bioflux, is a single unit mobile cardiac telemetry device with real-world monitoring and data transmission. Additional solutions are the BioCare Telemed and BioHeart, which is a consumer-oriented product. He's recently been reading Sapiens, which he doesn't really recommend, and Guns, Germs, and Steel, which he does. I'm David Williams, host of the Health Biz Podcast and president of Health Business Group, a strategy consulting firm that helps companies like Biotricity develop robust growth plans. Reach out to me, dwilliams at healthbusinessgroup.com, if you'd like to discuss strategy for your company. While you're at it, make sure to subscribe to the Health Biz Podcast on your favorite platform. Well, Wakas Al Sadiq, founder and CEO of Biotricity, welcome to the Health Biz Podcast. Thank you for having me. Now, you have done some pretty cool things uh, in your career from a technical standpoint, which have uh, culminated or at least brought you to this point on Biotricity. But I'd like to hear a little bit about how you got there. What were you like as a kid? Did you have Biotricity in mind? Were you tinkering? What, were you, what, what was your childhood uh, like and any big influences that have uh, stuck with you? Uh, great question. So, you know, I'm from a background perspective, I guess I'm kind of unique. I mean, most uh, tech people come back, come from a background of playing video games and whatnot. I was grew up in a, a smaller um, city in central Canada. So I grew up hunting and fishing and really yeah. outdoorsy, didn't really spend a lot of time playing video games. So, but I always liked creating things. I was a big fan of Lego and reading uh, and all of that. And I um, was always fascinated with, um, creating buildings and, and technology. And I got really interested in, I always remember this game, which was called Gizmos and Gadgets. And I think that's what got my love for engineering, which was you, you basically had to create little circuits and little puzzles that you had to solve to get to the next stage in, in, in the game. And so that was uh, a game that I played when I was in my, I don't know, third, second, third, fourth grade. And so that really got that passion of engineering going. And and uh, from engineering, you know, I, I went to university and in university I did some, in my grad school, I did some work on remote monitoring of environments um, for environmental monitoring. Uh, and that's what got me really thinking about monitoring individuals. So Akas, I know, I know you're saying that, you know, it's not so obvious you didn't play video games growing up. But on the other hand, if you think about, you know, sort of monitoring and tracking, it's something that you would be doing hunting and, and fishing and being out in the Canadian wild anyway. So maybe there's more of a connection than, uh, than might otherwise be apparent. Yeah, probably subliminal, right? Yeah. So then, um, you know, after you know, doing kind of computer engineering and your background, uh, you were at some you know, pretty big and well-known companies like uh, IBM and, and Intel. Uh, what were those roles like, and what what did you learn along the way there? Uh, excellent question. You know, I and, and I think environments really allows you to kind of think and, and and be creative. And all three of those organizations were really about creativity and about you know a, a term really called creative destruction. So uh, it's really about being innovative, and they really allowed you uh, to take chances and fail and give you budgets. Um, of course, you had to perform your job, but if you had an idea and you went to the team and the team. Um, so it was a very flat organization. So if you had an idea and uh, the team or the, your immediate manager approved it, you were allowed the freedom to go in, develop it, given a budget. Um, and whether it failed or didn't fail, it, you, know, you did a post-op analysis or a win-loss analysis. Um, and so that really uh, created this idea of both you know, ideation and this opportunity and ability to fail and to facilitate that. And you know, a lot of that has actually... Uh, transformed how I operate at Biotricity and really try to provide that uh, for the team and, and make it a part of the culture at, at the company. So let's talk about Biotricity. And I noticed that one thing that's helpful is that uh, since you've got bio at the start of the name, you've got bio at the start of all your product mm -hmm. names uh, as well. What's the common theme? What's the underlying technology? And you know, how are you bringing these uh, to market? Yeah, so, you know, it's kind of the name, the, the essence of the company, bio, uh, it, was, it was really a portmanteau of biology and electricity, a mashup, so bi biotricity. And really what we focused on uh, really early on was that we saw that the market was fragmented in chronic disease and cardiac disease being the number one killer, we really focused on that. And fragmented in the sense that patients are cycling through a number of different uh, life cycles of products and technologies through their cardiac journey. And there's really no tracking of this patient and their data throughout. It's, it's a patchwork of information that is 
uh, collected. And so, you know, to give you an example, you get diagnosed and then after diagnosis, you have an intervention. After intervention, you go into cardiac disease management. And then after disease management, if something changes, you go back to diagnostics and then you go continue this loop for the rest of your life because there's really no cure for cardiac disease. And so what we did at Biotricity said, we, we want to create a platform that really deals with this entire care journey. And we know that healthcare is going to get consumed more and more inside of the consumers uh, and inside of the patient's home. So how do we enable that? And so we started in diagnostics, but you know, of course the focus on cardiac. So we did a, created a smart cardiac monitor, which is the Bioflux. And that basically collects your ECG data, determines if uh, there's any uh, issues. It has uh, algorithms built in. If it detects an emergency, it lets a nurse know and you can deal with emergency response. And then the rest of our products, uh, which are you know, BioHeart and BioCare, these are all designed to basically uh, pick up where diagnostics leaves. So after diagnostics, you go into disease management. So that's where they, they pick up on the disease management side. And then they go into uh, a post, post care management. And then if there's an issue, uh, or, or it sees that there's an anomaly, it takes you back to diagnostics and you're back on the bioflux as, as you would in, in typical flow, but instead of going through five different systems and data having in five different places, it's all in one place. So, you know, obviously if you have these tools work, you've, you've got the technology, but then of course you've got the patient themselves and you have the clinician. How does your, how do your products fit sort of within that, that mix? Are they more for the patient? Are they more for the uh, clinician? How do, how, does, how do they all work together? Excellent question. So what we try to do is we, based on the product, we try to look at the workflows, right? And we try to create as the workflows aligned to what is and, and the engagement that is required. So like for the Bioflex, the majority of the engagement is from the clinician side, right? So their workflow is very, very detailed. It has a lot of features, a lot of entry points, um, and, and a lot of uh, access. On the patient side, the workflow is very limited because you basically want this patient to comply, wear the device, collect the data, and not really you know, uh, get a, alerted if there's something going on because it could put them into a panic. So we limit the information, but we design it all to facilitate patient compliance. Now, on disease management, it's almost the complete opposite because the clinician wants really nothing except at the end of the month. They want a summary. And the patient really has to engage, put in information. They need all the touch points. They need to be able to track. They need to be uh, interested in consuming that information, be excited to enter and use uh, additional devices and integrate all of that in. And so it becomes a very, very patient-centric workflow. Now, of course, there's a clinician workflow, which has, which has a level of detail. Um, and then you also have a nurse workflow in between here, which is something, something in between. So we really try to look at the, at the use case and the user story around uh, what, uh, what the user is going to ultimately get and what are their touch points, and then try to build the workflow around that. What's happening in terms of uh, reimbursement? You know, that's always an issue uh, within, within healthcare in order to encourage or just even enable a product to be used um, in the U.S. And I know there's a lot of discussion uh, and there's new reimbursement uh, codes around monitoring. How, how is the reimbursement environment affecting what you're doing? Another great question and, and one of the biggest pitfalls, you know, a lot of people don't realize how difficult it is to really innovate in healthcare. You know, they're thinking, you know, in entrepreneurship or in, in, in just any technology, you know, 90% of companies fail. Well, in the world of healthcare, well, 90% is just the FDA gatekeeper. And then yeah. after you get FDA clearance, you know, you have this whole thing about business model and do you get reimbursement or do you not get reimbursement? And so what we do at Biotricity, we almost uh, flip everything on its head. We do a very thorough and in-depth analysis of reimbursement for whatever use case we're going after. So in diagnostics, we did a full analysis on all of the diagnostic cardiology reimbursements. What are the codes? What are they used for? What are we like? And then we build our technology to fulfill the features and the needs of those reimbursement codes. So we essentially line ourselves and our feature set to line up with reimbursement so that reimbursement is established once we get FDA clearance. And that is, uh, uh, it's, it's an art, but it's something that we've mastered and it is, it, it is what lets us commercialize very, very effectively. Well, great. So how do you see things um, evolving, both in terms of the, the products themselves that you have, but then also kind of the whole service uh, component and the kind of patient uh, engagement and the clinician interaction? 
So, you know, I think I'll take that back to our vision, right? At Biotricity, what is our vision, right? Why do we start the company? Um, and I think ultimately that is what really drives everything. And what we wanted to do was we want to b- build the largest cardiac care group in the United States where you can track a patient can go from diagnostics all the way to disease management through their entire cardiac journey for their entire life cycle. And so our product portfolio is all complementary and is designed to touch the patient through for each of those touch points. And then uh, once we complete that portfolio, that's transformation level one, which is what we're very excited about for next year because we've built all the technology, we've piled it, uh, piloted everything. So BioFlux is, is in the market and the other products have been tested. They've been released, but they're going to be fully commercialized next year. And that will complete the ecosystem. The year after that, we will then open up the ecosystem to the population that is at risk because they get a referral to a cardiologist. And all of our customers have physical locations. So we can actually refer the patient to one of their locations. So that's very unique because many telemedicine or remote monitoring companies don't have any physical infrastructure to send a patient to. We actually do because ultimately we're addressing the needs of hospitals and multi-care groups and systems who naturally have physical locations. So, you know, our vision and how these products work together, the products work together to fit and fulfill this vision. And that vision is to be the largest cardiac uh, cloud uh, and, and, and care delivery group uh, in the United States. Well, that sounds like a, uh, a good vision. <laughs> um, let me just ask you the last question about, you know, in the midst of all this uh, company building and moving offices and dealing with the FDA and the reimbursement folks, do you have any time for uh, any reading? Is there anything that you would recommend uh, to the health biz audience? Yeah, I, I love to, to read. I will say what I sacrificed a lot in, in COVID because I've, I've, you know, on the, on the plane, you end up reading a lot and you end up, end yeah. up uh, consuming a lot of information, um, which is very, very helpful. And so now I'm a victim of like, you know, uh, summer, uh, re- reading a little bit faster and, and, and skipping points. But a, a book that I really enjoyed um, recently that I, that I read was uh, Sapiens. Um, but yeah. one, one book which I would always recommend, it's actually an older book, and I, and I read and I always remember it with a fond memory um, just because of the way it was laid out and, 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 and the detail that the, the writer uh, went into, was Guns, Germs, and Steel, which is uh, the history of uh, civilization and, 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 and what, was, what was the differentiating factor as to why certain societies modernized and other societies didn't modernize. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was really interesting, and very fulfilling. And I think for entre- from an entrepreneurial perspective, it's very interesting and also humbling in the sense that, okay, sometimes everything works in your favor, but, you know, time to ideate, which is essentially a big component of civilization, right, of, of, of yeah. being able to have that, that time is so, so critical. Um, and and it, it, he talks about it. And for me, it lined up against from, you know, innovation, but also, you know, big part of, well, if you innovate, your, your civilization changes. Well, those are pretty big sweeping books. I had had Sapiens on my shelf for some time and, and <laughs> someone had reminded me about it. And I, I, I recently read it. And, you know, there's some fairly, I don't want to call it, want to call it you know, depressing takeaways <laughs> uh, from that. But you could definitely say, well, you know, it's just a matter of time before we all kill one another and maybe not that much time. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens next. So that's a pretty, pretty sweeping uh, things that to, to, to pick up when you, when you could read. Well, well, that's why I mentioned Guns, Germs, and Steel as the recommendation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah most recent it. sapiens. But yes, the, the the let's not get people uh, depressed. We want to be right. uh, We want to be excited. So, good, good, very diplomatic and uplifting. I saw that people's uh, blood pressure had gone up over the last couple of years due to the uh, due to the pandemic, probably. So uh, we don't want it. We don't want to have that happen. So we'll, we'll read the Guns, Germs, and Steel instead. Well, Wakas Al Sadiq, founder and CEO of Biotricity, I want to say thank you very much for joining me today on the Health Biz Podcast. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to the Health Biz Podcast with me, David Williams, president of Health Business Group. I conduct in depth interviews with leaders in healthcare, business, and policy. If you like what you hear, go ahead and subscribe on your favorite service. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe on your second and third favorite services as well. There's more good stuff to come, and you won't want to miss an episode. If your organization is seeking strategy consulting services in healthcare, check out our website, healthbusinessgroup.com.